transmetatarsal amputation. Simplified and summarized. To fashion long plantar and short dorsal full thickness flaps, figure, begin the dorsal incision at the level of an intended bone section on the anteromedial aspect of the foot, and curve it slightly distal to the level of the bone section to reach the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Begin the plantar incision at the same point as the dorsal, carry it distally beyond the metatarsal heads, and curve it proximally to the end at the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Because of the greater cross-sectional diameter to be covered with skin medially, the incision is slightly longer on the medial than on the lateral side. Fashion the plantar flap to include the subcutaneous fat and a thin beveled layer of plantar muscles. To fashion long plantar and short dorsal full thickness flaps, figure, begin the dorsal incision at the level of an intended bone section on the anteromedial aspect of the foot, and curve it slightly distal to the level of the bone section to reach the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Begin the plantar incision at the same point as the dorsal, carry it distally beyond the metatarsal heads, and curve it proximally to the end at the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Because of the greater cross-sectional diameter to be covered with skin medially, the incision is slightly longer on the medial than on the lateral side. Fashion the plantar flap to include the subcutaneous fat and a thin beveled layer of plantar muscles. To fashion long plantar and short dorsal full thickness flaps, figure, begin the dorsal incision at the level of an intended bone section on the anteromedial aspect of the foot, and curve it slightly distal to the level of the bone section to reach the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Begin the plantar incision at the same point as the dorsal, carry it distally beyond the metatarsal heads, and curve it proximally to the end at the midpoint of the lateral side of the foot. Because of the greater cross-sectional diameter to be covered with skin medially, the incision is slightly longer on the medial than on the lateral side. Fashion the plantar flap to include the subcutaneous fat and a thin beveled layer of plantar muscles. Remove the toes at the metatarsophalangeal joints, and section the metatarsals in a beveled fashion dorsal distal to plantar proximal at the junction of the middle and distal thirds, figure. The metatarsals should be removed in a cascading fashion with each successive cut 2 to 3 mm shorter than the previous medial metatarsal. The fifth metatarsal should be even shorter, less than or equal to 4 to 5 mm shorter than the fourth. Always use a power saw to resect the metatarsal to try to prevent subsequent bony overgrowth. If the infection is present distally, try not to violate any abscess, leaving the metatarsophalangeal joint intact. Remove the toes at the metatarsophalangeal joints, and section the metatarsals in a beveled fashion dorsal distal to plantar proximal at the junction of the middle and distal thirds, figure. The metatarsals should be removed in a cascading fashion with each successive cut 2 to 3 mm shorter than the previous medial metatarsal. The fifth metatarsal should be even shorter, less than or equal to 4 to 5 mm shorter than the fourth. Always use a power saw to resect the metatarsal to try to prevent subsequent bony overgrowth. If the infection is present distally, try not to violate any abscess, leaving the metatarsophalangeal joint intact. Identify the nerves, and divide them well proximally so that their cut ends fall proximal to the end of the bones. Divide the tendons under tension so that they retract into the foot. A drain may be used as necessary. Bring the long plantar flap over the ends of the bones, and suture it to the dorsal flap with interrupted non-absorbable sutures, figure. Be careful about contouring skin tags at the medial and lateral edges because this may jeopardize the blood supply to the flap. This excessive tissue disappears with time. Apply a light compressive dressing, and place the foot in a carefully padded posterior splint with the ankle in neutral to slight dorsiflexion. Identify the nerves, and divide them well proximally so that their cut ends fall proximal to the end of the bones. Divide the tendons under tension so that they retract into the foot. A drain may be used as necessary. Bring the long plantar flap over the ends of the bones, and suture it to the dorsal flap with interrupted non-absorbable sutures, figure. Be careful about contouring skin tags at the medial and lateral edges because this may jeopardize the blood supply to the flap. This excessive tissue disappears with time. Apply a light compressive dressing, and place the foot in a carefully padded posterior splint with the ankle in neutral to slight dorsiflexion. Thanks for watching my video. 
Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit channel.